communication opens a lot of doors for better understanding, right? One, you learn and grow better as a human being, but two, it helps you be a better leader. It helps you be a better spouse, a father, husband, wife, mother, helps you be better in sales, helps you be better, a better student, a better trainer, a better teacher, helps you be better in business, helps you be better in every single area of life. So being a better communicator is going to help take your life, your business, your skills, your dreams to the next level. Hey, I'm Nathan Crane. I'm Derek Crane. And we're the co-founders of Crane Factor and the hosts of the Activating Greatness podcast. Activating Greatness is about living with greatness every single day, understanding yourself and being true to who you are, and creating greatness in every area of your life. And in today's episode, we're talking about how to be a better communicator. Why? Because communication is everything, right? And I'm no master of communication, but I've certainly learned a lot over the years and being a father and a husband for over eight years now, being a public speaker and an author, teacher and a trainer for over 12 years now, having learned a lot through communicating and researching and interviewing, interviewing hundreds of experts in different fields on camera, on radio, traveling around and sitting with them and talking with expert communicators. So certainly learned a lot and certainly still have uh, a lot more to learn, but we want to consolidate this in today's episode and give you some really practical things you can take away. So the question really is, how do we get better at communicating? The first thing to me is, reminds me of Don Miguel Ruiz's teaching, the second, the second agreement, which is don't take anything personally. Right. I mean, right, right away you are centered through a conversation. If someone is expressing themselves, whether it's a coworker, a spouse, a family member, a best friend, someone that you don't even know, and whether they are excited and they're going through something, happy, joy, or whatever feeling, or they could be mad, angry, sad, not to take any of it personally, stay centered and grounded and be able to listen to them and then also communicate in such a way, whether it be empathy, relaying back to them what it is that, that you heard. So that's one way that we can communicate better is just by listening, really truly listening to what someone is saying and expressing, and then also be able to give feedback in that sense. And right away when I think of communication is that sense of you're jamming with someone. You know, I mean, you're, you're, having, you're having an intimate conversation in any sense where you're gonna give feedback, you're gonna give your point of view, but then also allow the other person to express themselves too. Because so much in society built upon a foundation of just listening to a teacher. You know, we're, go we're growing up in an education system where it's, you know, pretty much that programming of don't express an emotion besides being neutral. And if you do, if suddenly you're ecstatic in class and you get up and you're happy and all this jazz, you're gonna go to the principal's office. Or if you're sitting there and mad and, and angry about anything, you're going to go to the principal's office. But if you're neutral and don't express anything other and, than neutral. And shut up. Right? And shut up. Shut up. Don't talk. I'm talking. <laughs> then you'll get rewarded. Right. So it's a, a reward-based system on really not how to communicate. So that, you know, we, we have to go out and figure out other ways of, of better ways of communicating. And one, one way right away is, is it's okay to not feel okay. Like that's create self freedom and know that it's okay not to feel okay. If, if, something, if something's troubling, if something's creating some sort of sadness or anger, being able to express it in a healthy way too. Right. So that, that first concept of don't take any of it personally Yeah. and being able to be centered and grounded through a conversation. Well, you also said listening is a key part and I, I have to agree. I mean, I really believe mm -hmm. that 80% of communication is listening. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you can even apply that to being a public speaker, not only in an intimate relationship or with your kids or you know, in your community, but also being a public speaker because if you're not listening mm -hmm. to what people are telling you, um, mm -hmm. both 
uh, silently and verbally uh, through your marketplace, through your research, through understanding who either your constituents are or your clients or your students or who your community is, the people you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. If you're not listening to their wants and needs mm -hmm. and to what they desire, then you're going to be speaking to dead air. People who you can't resonate with and who your message is not going to reach. So listening in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I would say, is 80%. I mean, we've all heard you have two ears and one mouth for a reason, mm -hmm. right? They used to tell me that in class all the time because I wouldn't shut up. I was in the principal's office all the time because I wouldn't shut up in class, right? But um, I think there's a, big, there's a big truth to that, that if you are listening, it's, it's listening intently. And we've talked about this, uh, especially with, you know, um, our generation right now. You could be sitting at dinner with six or seven people around a table and every single person is on their iPhone, yeah. right? Looking at Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. And it's like they're telling you, oh, these people I don't even know on Instagram are more important than you right now, mm. right? So... How can you listen to somebody? How can you be in an intimate conversation or communicate with somebody if that whole time you're sitting there scrolling through meaningless social media with people you don't even have real connections with and there's a person right in front of you that you can have a real connection, real communication, a real learning experience, real intimate moment and memory. So, you know, one thing you can do is put the phone away, yeah. put it on vibrate, turn it off, hide it, do something. When you're at a dinner table or when you're at a meeting or when you're, you know, with somebody that you care about, a friend or a, or a loved one, you know, mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, yeah, there's times to, to pick up your phone and whatever. But if you're sitting down to eat a meal or to have a conversation or something, mm -hmm. put the phone away and be with that person. Mm -hmm. Because if communication is 80% of listening, you should be sitting there listening to them. And, you know, I love this quote uh, by Peter Drucker, who says, the most important thing in communication is hearing what isn't said. And that's body language, right? And that's feeling. You have to tap into your, a little bit of your intuition, a little bit into feeling. We know that thoughts and emotions are energy, and we know that we can feel that energy. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a conversation with somebody and you're not tuning into their energy, you're not tuning into their emotions, you're not tu tuning into the unspoken, mm -hmm. then you could be saying something to them that is inside them. They're like, this guy needs to shut up. He's so stupid. What is he saying? I'm not listening to a word he says and blah, 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 blah. Right. And so you need to tune in and be like, okay, when is it time to just shut my mouth? Mm -hmm. When is it time to say something else? When is it time to change the subject? Mm -hmm. Right. Have you ever been in a conversation where Someone just yapping, 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 yapping the whole time. And you're just like, <laughs> shut up, please. And it's like, you don't want to tell them to shut up, you know? Yeah. But it's like, you just don't want to be involved in that anymore. You know, it's, but that happens to me when someone's like mm. constantly talking about the news or the negative yeah. things in politics or whatever. Yeah. It's just like, I either get engaged or I'm just like, yeah. please stop talking to me about that. It has no relevance in my life right now. And it's just negativity that I don't want. And it's that feeling of difference of being talked to right. or being or having a conversation with someone and and it's a, a practice that i love doing and this is from um eckhart tolle's a new earth is is he const he constantly talks about being in relationship with the present moment so something that you can you can actually ask yourself is what is my relationship to the present moment right now so if you're if you're sitting down with someone and suddenly you're you're off in manifesting mode and, and living through fantasy and, and everything of that jazz, but yet someone is right here with you having an experience, to them it could feel like you're not even there. And so then, so then simply just being like, okay, what is my relationship to this present moment right now? How can I be a better listener? And then how can I communicate myself in such a way where it's my own truth with compassion and love? Yeah, and you know, to extend on what you said, I think also a lot of times what happens in when people are having a conversation is um, some people may go into the future and think about other things, but oftentimes people are living in the past, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And thinking about 
oh my god, did I forget to turn the stove off? Yeah. Or, you know, what, uh, did I forget this? Or, oh my gosh, that person almost ran me off the road. They're an idiot. And, uh, right, the thing that all these <laughs> negative things that have happened in the past that have no relevance to right now, yeah. while you're in a conversation with someone and they're trying to talk to you and it's like, are you really present and listening? And no, you're not when you're doing that. And the yeah. key is not to scold yourself in no. those moments, but to catch yourself and come back, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, certain things you might say might spark an idea for me. But what I tend to do, my habit that I've built is like that idea pops up and I kind of put a pin in it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, okay, I still want to listen to what he's saying. I still yeah. want to communicate, to commune, to, mm -hmm. to share, right? Mm -hmm. Sharing is not forcing. Mm -hmm. Sharing is both giving and receiving, yeah. giving and receiving. And if all you're doing is trying to give, give, give and not receive, then actually what you're doing is forcing. And mm -hmm. that's not communication. That's, you should just say, hey, would you like to sit down with me? I want to force my ideas <laughs> down your throat. How's that sound? <laughs> Instead of like, hey, let's have a conversation about something. And yeah. Someone's like, yeah. And you say, hey, I want to force my crap down your throat. You want to come hang out with me? No. Think anyone wants to hang out with you? <laughs> I don't think so, right? So, I mean, that, that's the key of sharing. And yeah. so communication is sharing. And, and again, that kind of technique you can do with those ideas, if you're a very creative person and you get sparked ideas, mm -hmm. visualize, okay, put a pin in that. I can talk about that. I can bring it up at a certain point. But I can't keep thinking about it right now in depth while he's talking and also be able to truly listen to what he or she is saying. Mm -hmm. And that leads me right into this book, How to Be an Adult in Relationships. And the, this is by David Richo. And what, what he talks about is this level of acceptance. So when you, can find, when you can find like a group of people or friends or, you know, family members where like you can, you can feel accepted or even give that gift of allowing someone else to be accepted. So well, what they're sharing and everything like that is a very safe place for them to share. You know, you're there listening. It's like, it's like you, you feel like a bassist in, in a uh, band. You're, you have a solid foundation and someone's able just to fully express. And then when, when it's turned to just lay down a really sick solo, then it's, your, then it's your turn to lay down a sick solo. You know, the other person can be the bassist in that sense. Um, so through, through this book, I just have a quick little excerpt here. Um, talking specifically about acceptance, it says, In Buddhism, there is a phrase, the glance of mercy, which refers to looking at other human beings with acceptance and understanding. Acceptance means we are received respectfully with all our feelings, choices, and personal traits and supported through them. This makes us feel safe about knowing and giving ourselves to others. Yeah. So that place, that place of being able to express yourself and on the other side, there's just like, oh, support or it's this feeling of like, oh, I hear what you're going through. How, how can I support you through this? Mm -hmm. or, or even if there's um, really nothing that needs to be said on the other side and someone just needs to express what they're going through. Right. And on the other side, just have full acceptance. You know? Yeah, I've watched a few uh, that reminds me of. Uh, this show I've watched a few episodes of that like I want to keep watching it but it's kind of hard for me to um, it's called Last Chance You and it's mm -hmm. like kids that basically have had really troubled childhoods and upbringings but they're incredibly talented football players they often go to a division one school and then end up getting kicked off the team mm -hmm. or something because their grades or fights or something and then they end up going to a JUCO a junior college yeah. to try and get back up to get into a division one or division two school to try and achieve their dream of becoming, most of them want to be in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And what you see with these coaches, a lot of these coaches that are coaching at the junior college level, and, and I mean, they end up having a lot, a number, not a lot, a number of their kids that do go on to division one schools and even less, but a few more that go on to play in the NFL. Um, those coaches often are continuously just harping on those kids mm. so much, calling them stupid, telling them how mm. dumb they are, they fucked up, they're mm. such an idiot, and da, da, da. like every day in every practice. And, you know, they do get a little positive here and there, right? Oh, great job, they make a good play. 
but majority of the time it's just telling them how stupid they are. And, mm. and on one end, that can be effective for getting young people to do what you want them to do. Mm. But the question you have to ask yourself, is that kind of communication, that constant you know, badgering of their uh, emotions and their quality, constant tearing them down, is that mm. going to make them a better human being? constantly telling them mm -hmm. how horrible they are at something, constantly reminding them how stupid they are. Mm -hmm. And you see some of these kids, I mean, some of them end up leaving the team and going, doing something stupid and end up in jail mm -hmm. or ending up dead, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, some of them respond to that okay, but you know, follow them in 20 years and see what kind of person they are. Did that actually help them become a better person? And so what you know, that's reminding me of is whatever your role is in a communicator, we can always do better. Mm -hmm. And we can always ask the question, is this form of communication actually going to help this person mm -hmm. become a better human being? Or is it tearing them down mentally, emotionally? And there are times when communicating, you do need to be stern, you yeah. do need to be strong. But I don't think you ever need to get to that point where you're screaming and yelling at somebody, telling them how stupid they are and breaking them down. I think all you're doing there is reinforcing their beliefs about themselves that they are stupid. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, anyone who's been brought up in a really bad childhood that, you know, has had parents leave or, or killed or have been abused or whatever, they already have massive um, self-loathing mm -hmm. and very low self-esteem and so breaking down their self-esteem is not going to help them anymore mm -hmm. and this is true in your relationships in your business as uh, as a leader in anything in your life whether you're a coach or whatever so i think to extend on that is to talk about compassion is mm -hmm. putting yourself in their shoes when mm -hmm. you're communicating right someone's talking to you try to be compassionate mm -hmm. it's not always easy especially in an intimate relationship mm -hmm. it's easy to kind of like forget about these things and just you know, yell at each other, mm -hmm. but it's really important to step back and go, okay, am I actually helping the situation? Am I helping our relationship or am I making it worse? Mm -hmm. If I'm making it worse, what do I need to do to improve it? I need to do the things we're talking about. Listen, I need to have more compassion, understanding, mm -hmm. put myself in their shoes, try to understand where they're coming from, mm -hmm. uh, accept them, who they are, where they're mm -hmm. at, right? And, and be present. And that reminds me of a quote by the great philosopher Plato. Mm -hmm. And he said, wise men speak because they have something to say. Fools speak because they have to say something. <laughs> and my question to that quote was, well, what determines if you have something to say, mm -hmm. right? And that leads me to kind of three levels of, understanding mm -hmm. which the first we could say is knowledge mm -hmm. you read something you hear something you watch something you sit in class you take notes you do that sort of thing that's how you gain knowledge right mm -hmm. knowledge does give you some level I would say of confidence to feel like you have something to say but certainly the next level of that that I think everyone should strive towards is experience mm -hmm. And experience is the doing, the experimenting, mm -hmm. the practicing, the failing, going through the failures, learning from that, and then growing, mm -hmm. right? Super important. That's what experience is. And then you really have something to say when you're speaking from experience. And the highest level of that, which I think we all should strive towards at some level as well, is then teaching. Mm -hmm. and, and teaching through your experience and through your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because through teaching, then you begin to master. And mm -hmm. as you become a master of it, then you know it internally and it's a part of you. And it's not something that you, know, you could ever just read. Someone can't just read a book and then turn around and teach it from experience as if they're a master. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the difference, right? Mm -hmm. You have to go through those experiences, that experimenting, that failing, that learning, that growing, and then teaching. And through teaching, I feel through that experience, now you have something to say instead mm -hmm. of feeling like, I have to say something mm -hmm. to be relevant. And that's what happens. People feel like, oh, I have to say something to to be relevant in the situation, to be liked, to be a part of it or whatever. I often find myself in a situation like even I feel like I have something valuable to add mm -hmm. and I actually don't say anything. I'm just like, I don't feel like 
I really need to be a part of this conversation, mm-hmm. or I don't feel like, you know, is this just, is this, uh, I asked the question, like, is this just my ego wanting to come in and feel like I'm a part of it, or mm-hmm. is it really important that I say what I say right now because it could change somebody's life forever, mm-hmm. you know? And that's often how I base. If I'm like standing next to a few people having a conversation, or I'm even a part of it, you know? So I think those are important questions to ask ourselves and also to really strive towards mastering things, um, teaching things, learning through experience, and then getting to that point where we really feel like, yeah, I have something to say Mm. because I've lived it. Absolutely. What I'm gathering from that, from all that, is the concept of quality over quantity. Yeah. The quality of what it is that you want to express. And and if it's, I like I like the simple saying, if you don't have something nice to say, then don't say anything at all. Right. You know, it, it's that. And what I take from that is just like in a moment where, if if you feel like you're mad or want to put someone down or, or anything like that, just to just take take a moment, take one single moment, come back to presence, be able to get out of that kind of emotional river flow stand on dry land be able to see it also reflect and then speak from that point of view the other the other concept of communication that i think is very vital is the communication that you have with yourself yeah so self-talk positive self-talk because it's like what you're talking about with those kids going to the junior college football they're getting reinforced with negative self-talk I think one of the greatest gifts that we could give the next generation or anyone that we come into contact with is positive reinforcement. Yeah. Like, oh, you are a phenomenal and great human being. Like you, you have so much potential. You can, you can achieve anything that you want to. Don't put any sort of limits on yourself. If you're, if you're talking negative about yourself, that's a moment to like stop and be like, oh, you know, that, that might be some sort of programming or maybe a coach was telling me something in my childhood all this time and be able to have that uh, loving yourself concept. Yeah. There, there's, even, there, there's a book by Gay Hendricks called Learning to Love Yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's all these practices and concepts about creating positive self-talk and being able to um, really get in that mode of loving yourself and then from that point, you know, then sharing that love with all others through the way that we communicate our truth and also being able to listen and receive what other people are communicating as well. Yeah, and I think one, one little thing that I would add to that is finding the balance, right? Mm. Between, I feel there, there is a time where it is important that if somebody's doing something harmful to themselves or others or doing something incorrectly, Mm -hmm. we first have to raise awareness around that. Mm -hmm. And the only way to raise awareness around it is to point the truth at it. Mm -hmm. Hey, I noticed that you're doing X, Y, Z. And you have to bring that up. Otherwise, they'll never know, right? So, but you do it in a way that is, that is compassionate. And at the same time, then you can talk about you know, I notice you're doing X, Y, Z, and it's not good, and it's causing these problems, right? But here's what you could be doing, Mm. and here's the benefit that it would be bringing to you and everyone around you. Mm. And so you pivot, right? You pivot Mm. from, and and you can only do that, all these methods, like a lot of books about communicating are just about techniques, and the reality is techniques don't work unless you actually care about the person. If you're just using a technique to try and manipulate or control or take advantage or be, you know, the smarter person or whatever, that's only going to get you so far in life. You have to actually care about the people you're talking to for Mm -hmm. any of those techniques and methods to actually work. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I don't want to leave feeling like only talk to people positive all the time. It's like, I think, at least I believe, there are times that you absolutely have to identify the problem. If we don't Mm -hmm. identify the problem then you're not aware of it. But Mm. focus more time on the solution. Spend more time on the positive and what's possible. And, you know, far too often we spend all of our time on the negative and almost no time on the solution. Mm. We reverse that, you know, then you're really impacting people's lives through your communication in Mm. a really, really positive way. And being able to do it in such a way where, you know, you're not 
not putting the other person down. And it's like what you said, when you truly like care about someone, I mean, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to put them down and like put them in a place of being like, you know, you're doing this and, it, and you're being stupid for it. And, and, and that, that's yeah. the, so there's the, the positive side to it where you can, where we can relay it in, in such a way, what you're saying, where they receive it with, with more openness and, yeah. and, and more and being like, oh, this person like truly cares about me and that's why they're expressing this to yeah. me. Yeah, and that's the goal, right? Yeah. And, and at the same time, like you opened up with like, don't take anything personal. Like you can't yeah. ever control how the person's gonna receive yeah. your yeah. criticism. And if we always expect that they're gonna receive it positively, then we're gonna be let down because mm -hmm. not, it doesn't matter. Some people like however you communicate with them as loving and caring as you can, they're gonna take it as negativity mm -hmm. because that's how they're wired. Mm -hmm. So you communicating with them in that way, you can't take it personal mm -hmm. that they're not getting it from you in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And their practice, if they want to, is mm -hmm. not to take that criticism personal uh, it's so it bold. goes both ways they, right they would want to <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? yeah if they want to i mean and you then, can't make them you no. can't control them and you have no control over that all you can do is control how you represent yourself your feelings taking things personal or not yeah. and and sharing in the way that you do so and, and being able to look outside of the box and be able to gather up information and knowledge through other resources and other and books and examples and and things like that will will just will just open and stimulate other possibilities of being able to relay and receive and cuz we're not there's not a class growing up that's like here's healthy ways to communicate and if it's not shown through parents growing up healthy ways to communicate it's just going to be habitual patterns that are all throughout life so these what what we're giving examples of and all that jazz is is more or less to create some stimuli that's being like, oh, there's other options. Yeah, there's, there's other exactly. ways. Yeah. So I think that's a good place to end it. Um, we we definitely appreciate you tuning in. And if you're on iTunes, listen to this or on YouTube, um, please do us a huge favor and leave us a review. Uh, five stars, ideally, would be mm -hmm. wonderful. It helps more people learn about this podcast. Um, if you like it, you know, we would love for you to do that. Also, you could head over to cranefactor.com. We have a free newsletter there that goes out with inspiring videos, how-to tutorial videos, exercise mobility, things like that, as well as our podcast there. You can also subscribe to this on iTunes. And um, if you did like it, uh, also please share it. So that's it for today. And we look forward to talking to you in the next episode. Take care. Thank you for tuning in today. And remember to live with greatness in every area of your life.